Well, the answer is absolutely not. Jesus is said to be the minister of the new covenant. So absolutely not. Of course, he was circumcised as a young baby. That's what Jewish families did. That's fine. And Jesus, when he began preaching and teaching, he began to tell the public that there's a new covenant and all the words of Jesus, as he taught, are the new covenant. The old covenant is finished, passé. No good keeping the laws of Moses in the letter, because if you do, you're not keeping the law of Messiah in the spirit, and that's where you should be. So, of course, he was circumcised. He went to the feasts and went to the temple with his parents. All of that's perfectly clear. But he then became, as he began to announce it in his teaching, that he was actually a minister of the new covenant. This is Paul in the book of First Corinthians. For though I am free, Paul said, and he was a Jew, former Jew, I'm free with respect to all. I've made myself as a servant, that should be translated, a servant to all. Why? So that I, that I can persuade and, and discuss and bring people to faith in the gospel of the kingdom. To the Jews, I became like a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the Torah of Moses, I, Paul, who was a Jew, I became as one under the law. Now notice this in parentheses. Though I, Paul, a Jew, am not under the law of Moses. So he's willing to be diplomatic, as all of us should if we're invited to a house where they're Sabbath keepers, where they're Jews. Certainly we keep the Sabbath with them. That's wonderful. But the Torah of Moses is not, I repeat, not the same as the Torah of Messiah. The Torah of Messiah is simply the teachings of Jesus. And in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, don't imagine I came to undo the Torah. But what he was doing was fulfilling it. For instance, on the law of divorce, you remember well that Moses had said, you can have a divorce for whatever reason that was. A detail doesn't matter now because it's not binding on us. But I, Paul, I, Jesus, rather, in Matthew 5 says, that law of Moses about divorce is finished. It was given to you while you were still hard-hearted. But I, Jesus, I'm saying that that law of divorce in Moses is false now. It's wrong. It's the wrong covenant. So it's absolutely essential to understand that the Torah of Messiah, as distinct from the Torah of Moses, is the only Torah that you should be under. And if you're in any doubt about that, you really need to get that straight because you would wind up being under the wrong law. You ought to be under the Torah or law of Messiah, Jesus, that's his teachings, and of course the teachings given later through Paul. The teaching of Jesus doesn't end with Jesus it goes on developing through Paul. So all of the New Testament writers are representing the Torah of Messiah. That's the Torah that we all need to be under. And the Torah of Moses in the letter is now out of date. Circumcision in the flesh is completely neither here nor there. It doesn't matter. It has no religious significance at all, period. I think it's fair to say that most Christianity would uh, nod their heads and say, yes, amen, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. But I think it, it seems like most Christians are taught or understand that Jesus is the mediator only post-resurrection. He's not mediator before the cross. In other words, Jesus not only kept the old covenant law, mm -hmm. but he had to in order to you know, to yes. sort of atone for our sins yes. and be the perfect lamb. But these statements in Hebrews, mm -hmm. Jesus as the mediator of a new covenant, don't they also apply while Jesus was on earth preaching oh, absolutely. the gospel and so on? Absolutely. So we'll give two texts on the great point that you make there. Hebrews 9.11, when Christ showed up, when he appeared as a high priest, introducing, obviously, introducing the new covenant. What he did at eight days old is neither here nor there. Obviously, he was circumcised. That's nothing whatsoever. He had no say in that, no control of that at all. His parents were Jewish. Of course, he was circumcised. Paul later explains that circumcision in the flesh is of no value and that Jesus, of course, would agree with that. So it's very important to examine your life and say, am I trying to follow the wrong covenant? That would be a very serious error. 
there's a very vague cloud of confusion that hangs over the minds of people. And that is that the teaching of Jesus doesn't count. Many people in churches have been taught the only thing that counts is that Jesus died for your sins and rose. That is absolutely false, dangerously false. So Jesus is introducing the new covenant when he says, you've heard that it was said by Moses under the old covenant, so-and-so, but I, Jesus, as minister of the new covenant, am now teaching things that are not Old Testament, they're New Testament. And even Jesus doesn't complete all of that because he later says in John that the things he hasn't said, which would be too hard for people to bear at that stage, but later using Paul as his own mouthpiece, his own representative, you get the fullness of the new covenant in the teaching of Jesus through Paul.